Welcome to Kona a Crush, a clandestine effort to exhaustively research and document events occurring in and around the village hidden in the leaves. I'm Ruby. I'm Gwen. We're back. It's another, it's another episode of Kona a Crush. We did it. We, we're recording. This is a this is a terrible way to start a podcast, but we're here. Yeah, hey. What's up, everybody? What's up? You, you done anything this last week, Gwen? Or are we like... I feel like I'm sort of in a rut with doing shit over the week to talk about. Um, yeah. Maybe you broke out of that. Any luck? I've just been working. Yeah, I haven't been working. I just haven't been doing anything that isn't work either. So it's like maybe calling it working is a stretch. I've been drawing and, and reading Yuri manga, but like that's work. That's that's to, to you. That's work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been doing fuck all. I like like I'd say I was playing Elden Ring, but I've barely even been doing that. So like, what the fuck? I'll watch an anime again one day. I promise. This is my sacred vow to all of our audience. But for now, it's three episodes of Naruto a week and nothing fucking else. Yeah, the new anime season is going to start up pretty soon, so like... Yeah, right. Th- th- there will be new stuff to watch soon. Mm-hmm. Right, like, I heard there was like a really good like looking episode of like Osama Ranking or whatever the last week, but I stopped watching that show. Um, yeah. You know, sh- sh- shout-outs to Shota Goshizono. I heard you did a good job. Saw some cool-looking gifts. That's that's not watching anime, though, again. No, it's really not. But that doesn't fucking matter, because we're here to talk about Naruto. We're here to talk about Naruto, and I did watch three episodes of Naruto, and I had, like, a pretty solid time watching these episodes of Naruto. Yeah, they were pretty, like, medium-high, enjoyable episodes of Naruto. They're really what I signed up for, uh, I feel <laughs> like. Wanna, you want to get into it? Yeah, let's get into it. Episode 33, Battle Formation. Ino Shika Cho. Sasuke has a fever dream about his parents' death. Well, Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji stand off against the Sun Ninja. Choji doesn't like being called fat, so he goes after Zaku right away with his human boulder technique, which proves too hard to handle for Zaku, so Dosu moves in to help, getting caught in Shikamaru's shadow possession jutsu. Ino uses mind transfer to hold Keen hostage, but the Sun Ninja don't give a shit, they're just here for Sasuke. Neji and Tenten show up to avenge Lee, but they're interrupted by a sudden swell of chakra as Sasuke begins to wake up. I put down that I had a note to talk about Sasuke's nightmare, but I don't actually remember if I had anything to say about it. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, it's just uh, Sasuke of the past calling current Sasuke a bitch. Yeah, I I do think it's like a kind of fun uh, sequence visually. Like, you know, you've got Sasuke just standing in the fucking void looking at his child self. And then then suddenly the child self is like, bam, here's our dead parents. Fucking idiot. Fucking coward. Fucking dipshit, this is your fault. You did this. I'm kind of away from that, though. It's time It's time for everybody's favorite funny guys, Team 10. Like, even, even even moving into, like, the actual they're here to be part of the fight scene, they don't really stop being the comic relief guys, so I guess that's just where they're going to be at for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they even play the fucking comedy music over their fight. Yeah, right. Um, you know, they, 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 they come out of the bush and they're like, all right, we've each got to, we're each going to do our bit, you know? You know, it's like, ah, oh, I, I can't, I can't let you, uh... I can't let Sakura up stage him in front of Sasuke, and it's like, I mean, you know, he's unconscious, but and that like gives you only like a marginally smaller chance of like getting him to notice the youth than usual. So like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Shikamaru is like, ah, oh, this is boring, but I have to perform gender, so I guess I'm here, even though I hate this. Shikamaru really loves to perform gender. It feels like I don't know why he's so into this, but this is the one thing that can motivate him to do shit. Because he's like, oh, I can't let a girl upstage me because I'm a man. And then Choji, well, you know, Choji is the fat guy, so he gets called fat and he gets angry about it. So they all have, they all launch into this fight with their with their bits. Yeah, and it's not like extremely funny, really, but it's definitely what they, what they're doing. And I'm still like kind of caught off guard by it. The thing that really struck me as we get into the actual fight with them is like. So in in Naruto, like the Inoshika Cho formation is, uh, it's like this is a thing that is a established tradition in the Hidden Leaf Village. Like the 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 members of the Yamanaka, Nara, and Akimichi clan, you know, they put their kids together and they have them go on a team together, and that just is establishes a thing that works. But like watching this, I guess they didn't. I, I guess they didn't check to see if these three knew how to like make that work together before they got into this like the tuning exams. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're trying to do here, generally speaking. Yeah, they're not, like, coordinated at all. They're just all, like, trying to take on their own guy. Yeah, right? Like, Shikamaru, like, immobilizes Dosu for five minutes, and then just, and then Choji is just, like, trying to attack a different guy for that entire time. I feel like there's a much more obvious target in the guy who's standing there. And, like, you basically don't even have to do anything to stop Keen because she's barely in this scene. Yeah, right. I Like, the the thing you gotta do is Shadow Possession... Choji take out the guy who's shadow possessed, mind transfer, mind transfer, fight the third guy. Uh huh. 
right? And that occupies every single member of the enemy team. It's just one of those things that feels like I I can't tell where the line is on like, oh, these are the comedy guys and where the line is. Oh, this is just kind of like a poorly considered fight in terms of like how it's staged because, yeah, you you just don't get the sense that these three know how to do the one thing they each know how to do very well. Yeah. In like a real situation, too. (laughs) Yeah, right. This is like... I feel like that you know there's a very immediate application of the shit that they can do here, and um, it just it just doesn't come together. There's another weird thing in this fight where uh, there's like this, this little bit of weirdness that the the anime adds to this fight that I was like very confused by because we get the bit when Eno is possessing Keen about how like oh if if Keen is hurt then Eno will be hurt also, and so Zaku just starts attacking Keen and uh, we get a shot where like Zaku is doing like an air blast at Keen and then also. In the anime, there's a bit where Choji is, like, barreling at Keen at, like, max speed. And I'm not sure why that's happening. Yeah, I don't know. But it, it does lend a sense to the fight in general, being just kind of confused. You know, not, not, not a strong impression, like, for Team 10 as, uh, as combatants here. And, like, I guess I can kind of get it if the thing they're going for is that, like... In fiction, Team 10 don't know how to fight together, and that's something that, they're, like, they're going to overcome, but, like, I have no idea if we see them do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, and I, it really makes me feel like, like, Asuma should have, uh, maybe, maybe wait, like, had them wait a year, but until they knew how to use their abilities in concert, which is, like, the thing that they're supposed to do. Yeah. It, it just makes it seem like his confidence in them was kind of misplaced. <laughs> and then he shows up, um... The main thing I want to talk about with Neji is like, or the, the, the thing that's most striking to me about Neji is like a, a, a translation choice in the manga that really threw me for a loop. Ooh. Where he says that Rock Lee looks like Mo Howard from the Three Stooges. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which I think is, I, I mean, you know, you gotta take, you, you, like there's, there's some degree of license you can take when you're making your translation, but I feel like, I feel like Neji knows who the Three Stooges are is a bit... That's a step way too far. It's a step a little bit too far. So, you know, Nejisu, he's like, it's cool that he's like, you know, he's willing to like stand up early a little bit. He's willing to, to help out his yeah, bro. Yeah, he's totally here to avenge his bro, and that's awesome. Yeah, I can get behind that. We also we also see the, I guess, actually, I don't remember if this is the first time we see the fucked up Hugo Eye Veins. I wrote my notes that it is, but I'm not sure if that's actually true, or if we saw them in the test, like the first test. I don't remember. It, it doesn't really matter. This this is this is like a very mi- minor point. We can we can move on if you want. Yeah, we we haven't like mentioned them. So mm-hmm. hey, the fucking eye veins. Eye veins. <laughs> yeah, they're they're they're, they're, they're all weird. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Sasuke's curse mark spreads over the right half of his body in a flame motif, and he demands Sakura to tell him who got her ass. Zaku volunteers that info up himself. Team 10 make a hasty retreat before Sasuke moves in to kick everyone's ass. Zaku throws a big sound blast, but Sasuke moves himself and his incapacitated teammates out of harm's way. Sasuke throws a phoenix flower jutsu at Zaku, who uses air to blow away the fire, revealing hidden shuriken that he doesn't have time to avoid. Sasuke follows this up by getting behind him, and with an arm in each hand and his foot on Zaku's back, dislocates both of his shoulders. Sasuke moves in on Dosu, but Sakura can't stand the cruelty and stops him. Sasuke's curse mark recedes, and he drops to the ground out of breath. Dosu offers his scroll in return for a safe retreat, and Team 10 move in to look after the injured Leaf Ninja. So yeah, Sas- Sasuke's got his fucking sick flame patterns on his body. It's kind of badass. I, think, I, I, just think it's, I just think it's cool when a guy has like a fucked up curse mode, and this is uh... extremely fuck yes. I also like that uh, apparently a side effect of having your curse mode is that you just become a real chuny motherfucker. He just starts talking about shit like, on my road, I must put power into my hands, even if it means abandoning myself to the devil. And it's just like, he just gets so over the top instantly. He's all of his all of his inhibitions are gone. He's just here to be like a fucking sicko. It's awesome. Fuck yes. I just, I, I just think that's really fun. And then Zaku is like, yeah, I, I can fucking take this guy still because he's a chump and he gets he gets his shit rocked. He's like, it's kind of amazing how old Zaku gets. He's like, like. Zaku gets so fucking owned. Because I, th- I, th- I feel like they do like a fairly decent job of like trying to show him like he's actually, he's actually giving his all here, and it just doesn't fucking matter. Like there's the bit where he does like his full strength air blast from his hands, and you get the kind of cool shot where like everything in the sh- everything in the, fr- in the shot by him is just kind of like blown out in the big air blast wave. Yeah, and he just and he just fucking misses, and then I didn't mention in the recap, but um, 
I, I, I think before the 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 Phoenix Flyer Jutsu, Sasuke just like swats him and he goes flying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, it's just cool. Like I, like I think we're we're immediately being sold. I'm like, oh shit, this is like Sasuke has gotten so much stronger from the curse power. And I'm like, hell yes, I love when the guy gets so much stronger from the curse power. Yes, it's so good. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really being served well by in, in my love of all of the shonen manga bullshit by watching uh, a big a big shonen anime. Who who could have foreseen this? Yeah, who could have? Yeah, and then like the 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 shoulder, the shoulders. Yeah, that's like a that's a real psycho move. Like thought Zaki, it, it seems it seems really mean, especially when Zaki's got all sorts of fucked up shit in his arms. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, ah, oh, you you like your arms so much, huh? It would be a shameless thing happen to him. <laughs> you just get so over the top. It's amazing. the The other thing that I think is interesting about the scene is like it feels like it's the only time that I've in, in my memory that I that they really try to make anything out of uh, Sasuke and Sakura as like a potential relationship because like Sasuke wakes up and he's immediately like oh who hurt Sakura I've gotta I've gotta fucking kill them and you get <laughs> yeah like since when did you give a shit about Sakura dude <laughs> <laughs> will this ever happen again I have my doubts but like he's you know there's there's definitely like a gesture towards it here and you know you get the you get the moment of Sakura like hugging him from behind and be like, "Oh no, Sasuke, you can't do this. You got to be better than this." And it's like, you know, I, I th- there is a, a gesture being made towards putting this relationship on screen, which is like more than I thought there was. Like, I don't think this is great for Sakura's character, really. Like, I don't think this addresses any of the issues we had when we were talking about the Sakura episode last week. No. But it's it's something, I guess. Man, no. Sasuke and Naruto both have sicko modes. Hell yeah. It's not fair. Sakura needs a sicko mode. Sakura needs a sicko mode. This, there, there's, what, what, what do we think Sakura's sicko mode should be? Let's let's work on this. Ah, uh, fuck yeah. Okay. Um, right, because like a, a, a theme for the sicko mode so far is like an external source of chakra. Mm-hmm. Right, be it the uh, nine-tailed fox or the, the, the curse mark, borrowing a chakra from Orochimaru or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel bad for initiating this, but I don't have like a, a great way to build on it, and I feel like I've just left you hanging here. Yeah, um, I know. Um, we don't we don't know about nature chakra yet. No, but that's yeah, but it fucking doesn't matter. Uh, I think it would be cool if Sakura has like some amount of like natural affinity to like nature chakra, and like dangerously taps into it. Yeah. Now, speaking of like nature chakra and like sage modes and shit, this is like getting ahead of ourselves again. But I'm just thinking about how we see fucking frog sage mode, we see snake sage mode, we never see slug sage mode, and that's bullshit. Bullshit! Sakura should have been the first one to learn sage mode as a means to, like, control her natural inclination to tapping into it. It'd be, it'd be sick. And then, like, her training with Tsunade could have, like, an immediate, like, uh, th- like, connection towards, like, something she already had going on rather than, like, making her the designated healer. Yeah. Yeah, alright, we, we solved it. We, we, we fixed Naruto, everybody. <laughs> we did it! We did it. Um, they could even make slug sage mode cute mm-hmm. easily. <laughs> and like we could, we could, we could tap into the whole like thing with Sakura where she's got like because she she she's really like repressing her like more rambunctious feelings and stuff, right? And she's like, oh shit, she like she lets it out when she enters her like nature chakra sicko mode, and she's just like a she's like a rowdy shithead. Yes, God. Yeah, like the the last thing. That I really want to have to talk about this episode. That I like is, uh, I, I think it's like a really interesting angle that we get on Dosu here. Is he's just like, okay, I'm out of here. Like, I we were told to go kill this guy, and then Rochmar is doing some other shit where he gives him a sicko mode, and that that doesn't make me feel very good about my place in all this. So I'm gonna like look into this. I'm gonna give you the scroll. I'm gonna peace out. I think it's like, oh, he's got like, he's got some sort of awareness. You know, he's got he's. He's, he's positioning himself in like a, a much more interesting way than he was like before when he was just the like one of the cool tough guys in the evil kid squad. Yeah, you know for what good that does him. Yeah, no, it's not going to go well <laughs> for him. But like, I, I I like that position of like, oh shit, okay, I'm like not really, uh, I'm not really like the guy that Orochimaru cares about here. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's a very interesting way to put this guy who's like this really cocky villain who like feels like he knows so much more what's going on than everybody else on the back foot especially because like yeah this guy probably knows what the deal with the curse marks is because he's there's like other like sound ninja we see later that like he probably knows about on some level who get curse marks 
Mm -hmm. And so he he already kind of knows he's not one of those guys. And like, this is just really driving that home for him. And I think that's, I think it's a very interesting place to put a character in. Yeah, I, I, I agree. God, and Sakura's fucking affinity for nature magic could tie into the healing stuff too. Yeah. Right? Because like the whole like natural and the healing stuff like coincides like really strongly, just like mm-hmm. thematically. Like it would have made <laughs> it would have like made sense for the character if the person who had like a nature sicko mode was also the healer. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. Just saying. Masashi Kishimoto call us, we'll think we'll fix your shit. I know you don't care, but we'll fix your shit. <laughs> Yeah. Do, do just like a do-over of Naruto <laughs> from the start? <laughs> from the start, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. I'm sure I'm sure he would find that really fulfilling. Uh... <laughs> anyway, so I'm like never going to stop thinking about this. Mm-hmm. It would be cool. Like, it would just be cool. It would just be cool. But I feel like for the sake of the podcast, we should, we should maybe move on a little bit. We should maybe move on a little bit. Uh, okay, next episode? Next episode. Episode 34, Akamaru Trembles, Gara's Cruel Strength. Naruto is shocked awake after dreaming about the grass ninja and notices Sakura's hair. She brushes it off and Tenten shakes Lee awake. Sasuke learns Rock Lee got his ass kicked by the sound ninja and is surprised they're really all that strong. Kiba, Shino, and Hinata are waiting at the tower with their scrolls, comforting an upset Akamaru and talking about, wh- and talking about what happened. Even though they already have the scrolls they need from the leech trap, Kiba wants to go after more to increase their chances going into the next round. Only problem is, the target of this endeavor are the Sand siblings. Akamaru grows uneasy as they approach, so they watch from the sidelines as Gara stands off against some scary umbrella men. So yeah, I guess like at the top of this episode, we we finally got like a bit of a break from the the tension of the whole situation with uh, the sound the sound trio attacking. So everybody just gets uh, to, to sort of shift into comic relief mode a little bit. I hate how charming I find Ten Ten. Yeah, she's like pretty fun, right? She's like yeah. Well, like, like she certainly comes across as like feeling very assured that she has like a place on the team that she's on, and that she's like like there there isn't really the sense you get from the team uh, guy dynamic that she's like the one who's uh, like the sort of the, the 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 girl one who is just on the side. Like when you see them interacting, anyway, right? Like the, the, obviously, practically speaking, she never gets to do anything, but like. You know, like like watching them together, it's like, oh yeah, Ten Ten is just one of them, and that's like pretty cool. Yeah. You know, she just, she, she shows up. And she's like, oh, Rock Lee, I can't believe you you fucking got all caught up in this shit. I can't believe you guys are your ass kicked. You could have taken those guys. Could have taken those guys if you had immediately used your technique that like hurts you to try to impress a girl. You need to stop doing this shit. <laughs> uh, <it's, laughs> I, I, this is like another or one of those modes I, that I think is really funny where like Sasuke he, hears that Rock Lee was like got beat by the soundtrack he's like oh shit how strong were those guys but also like we, we know from Tenten it's like oh Rock Lee j- was just being kind of a dumbass like those guys probably could have taken Rock Lee really yeah I think that's always like a fun beat when that happens um but I guess there's a bunch of uh there's a bunch of like like, like little moments here of like varying that I they find compelling to varying degrees. Like I like I said, I like I like a lot of stuff with uh with Team Guy. Um and I like in theory when uh you know it's like hey soccer, let me get your hair fixed up a little bit, like it's looking kinda of messy. I like it less when they just start like entering fight about a boy mode, but this is the this is what I'm gonna have to take every time I see these characters interact basically, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Because like, I I I I in theory like really want to buy into their friendship, but Mm-hmm. Yeah, if if only they could be friends instead of whatever they have going on. Yeah, uh, I do. I, I, I do. I do think it's it's pretty fun that like that 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 like Naruto like wakes up and is like, oh wait, wait, wait. I'm not supposed to think Rock Lee is like a weirdo anymore. I'm pretty cool with Rock Lee now. What the fuck did I miss? Yeah, I also think it's really sweet that all of the uh, all of the like Leaf Ninja that gathered around this little encounter are just like helping each other. Yeah, it's like yeah, you know they're. Well, like, Neji's already had his whole deal of, like, ah, oh, it would be beneath me to fight you guys. But, you know, th- there's also, like, a sense of, like, yeah, a lot of these, I mean, like, uh, Team 10 and, like, Team 7 are, like, yeah, these people went to school together, so they, like, know each other. And, like, you know, ne- ne- Neji is, like, probably, like, Neji's, like, ultimately pretty cool about this, even if he's kind of a freak. And, uh, tend to, you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice. I don't, I don't actually have much more to say than it's nice, but it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Team 8, though. Team 8. Uh, it, we, we talked when we were talking about the previous episode about how... Team 10 doesn't fucking know what they're doing. But you see Team 8 is like, oh, these guys have it fucking figured out, right? Like, this is the only, like, or one of the only teams we see in this whole arc that's just like, oh, these these people, like, have a pretty good sense of how to work with each other. 
right? Like, even if she knows kind of exasperated with Kiba sometimes, there's a real sense of, like, yeah, there's a back and forth dialogue. They'll take each other's opinions into account. Yeah, right. I, I really like how Kiba and Hinata work together. Mm hmm. Right? Because Kiba, with, like, the strong nose and stuff, can smell, like, oh, there's stuff going on over in that direction. So Hinata knows, like, where to look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, like, you really get, like, this immediate sense of, like, oh, these people are good together. And it's, like, it's cool. Um, yeah. And, like, I, I want to point out, they mentioned this, they mentioned the trap. They mentioned the slugs. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the leeches. Yeah. Right? So I was right. They got the scroll from that. And now they're just fucking victory lap. Mm-hmm. And their victory lap goes immediately to the worst place it can for them. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, that's that's just that's just that's just uh that's just storytelling baby that's how it works yeah <laughs> they, they like they, they like run up on the, on the encounter between the sad siblings and the uh the, these the umbrella guy and his two friends who also have umbrellas yeah but they're not like as much of the umbrella guy because they don't have six of them <laughs> <laughs> and there's the moment where like where we're like Kiba talking to Akamaru, and he's like, "Oh shit, Akamaru says the tall guy is really dangerous." And like part one of the most obvious setup ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I want to want to move on to the next half of the episode and talk about how that goes. Yeah, the Umbrella Guy uses a technique called Simbon Rainstorm to no effect. Sagara hits him with the classic Sand Coffin into Sand Burial combo, making it rain blood. Luckily, there's umbrellas around. The other two Umbrella Goons get got, so Team Aid hides and hides fast. Gara wants to keep killing, but his brother and sister want to just go and wait in the tower. For a moment, it looks like Gara is about to get the Hidden Leaf Ninja, but he agrees to make way to the tower. Back in the present, Team Aid and the Sand Siblings run into each other at the tower, and some guy brings a videotape to Anko. It's security cam footage of the Sand Siblings making it to the tower, faster than anyone has before, and Gara is totally unharmed. Not even dirty. So, uh, the Umbrella guy, whose name is Midare, uh, he, fu- he fucks up because he- he's coming to this fight trying to be a projectile guy. Like, he's he's making a pretty good show of it because, like, oh, I can shoot a million needles into the air and then I can control them and make them fly around. But he's still ultimately a projectile guy and that's just, that's just not who you want to be. And it just, it just does, it, uh, you know, so the guard just blocks it all with the sand. I, I really like the sand sibling story. I really like getting this picture of their, their dynamic where Conqueror, uh, like walks into the situation. She's like, uh, Gara, don't be fucking weird about this. It's, it's, it's always so annoying when you go like full murder mode. And then the instant, the, like, the, 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 was like picking a fight with him. He's like, all right, you guys fucked up. My fucking baby brother Gara is going to block all your shit. And he's going to kill you. There's like anything you can do about it. He's so cool. And then as soon as the guys are dead again, he's like, oh, Gara, come on. Let's, like, we, need, we need to. <laughs> he's such a fucking dweeb. <laughs> he's, so, he's such a loser. It's amazing. It's so good. Uh, there's a bit that gets cut from the from the manga that I really like where where when the other two guys are being crushed, it just cuts over to, to, to Mari, who's just sort of like waving with a smile on her face. She's like, bye bye. <laughs> Which is fucking gold, but like kind of amazing. <laughs> She's cool with this. I mean, when your baby brother murders that many people, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get a, you gotta be able to face it with a smile. Like, I, I, I just like the sense of exasperation they have when it's like, okay, God, we we can't just run around this forest for the next five days trying to find everybody and kill them. It's gonna get annoying. <laughs> Please, we can just go chill at the tower. We don't, we don't have to do all this shit. And I was like, ah, fine. I, I don't know. I, I think there's like a really fun sense of their dynamic here, which is, which is like, uh, which is, which, is, which is more than we got earlier when they were just like, here's the ominous kid you showed up in the village. And also, Gara's fucking awesome. I need, I have to, it has to be said. He's, he's a really good sicko murder child. The sand shit is just cool. Like. Yeah, the, the sand shit is just cool. I like how he was super extra about the way he killed that guy, making sure to squeeze him extra hard so it sprayed blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and taking up one of his umbrellas. <laughs> <be> like, <laughs> like, you know, he saw that guy had umbrellas. He's like, okay, I got a great idea. This is gonna be awesome. He knew that shit right away. He's not gonna like. He's not gonna like say that he wants anybody to tell him it was cool, but like he wants them to think it was cool. Th- there's a bit where like while a uh, teammate is watching this, uh, Kiba's like, "Ah, oh, his, his sand smells like blood." And now I have to wonder, like, when Gara becomes nice later, does he like wash the sand, or is he still just like really unpleasant for dogs and dog people to be around? Um, no, he probably doesn't wash the sand. <laughs> like that's not like part of his. Uh, is his character growth? He just doesn't have time for that. He's a busy guy. Yeah, but also, 
consider, it probably doesn't get as bloody. Yeah, that's probably true. That's a good point, you know? So maybe, maybe the blood kind of wears out over time and it only smells kind of bad. Yeah, right? Like, I, I, I'm sure he grows to the point where he's like, okay, I don't have to squeeze this guy so hard it sprays blood everywhere. I'll just twist his neck inside of the sand. I'm just, I'm past the turning men into blood paste phase of my life. It's uh... <laughs> it's just inefficient. You can just rotate their head 360 degrees. <laughs> you don't even have to go that far. Like 180 will do. Some people have weird necks. You gotta be, you gotta be sure. Okay, that makes sense. I guess you, you can't be too careful when you're fighting ninjas. The, the other like moment with sad siblings I really like is once uh, once teammate arrives at the tower, they have this run in with the sad siblings where uh, <laughs> where where Gar is just giving him this death glare, and then like Tamari and Kakura just kind of like waving and smiling. It's like, hey, good job, you guys. <laughs> just this like a, like a very brief picture of like a completely nightmare social interaction. I think it's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty good. I also I I have to wonder how bad it feels to do, for teammate because they probably could have they probably could have had the record if they didn't stop and do this shit right like yeah it's like oh great I mean we we did it really fast but we're not the new record holders or anything so what's the fucking point yeah what's the fucking point <laughs> I was like it's pretty funny that like Anko and the Anbu people arrive back at the tower and they're like okay so we have shit to talk about but first we need to see how badass this kid is. I think my, uh, my my biggest letdown with the anime adaptation of, of that scene, specifically where Anko is like watching the videotapes, is uh, I love how the video equipment looks in the manga. <sighs> it's like super cluttered and there's all these cables all over the floor, and like it just looks kind of normal in the anime, which is a shame because it's like such a great aesthetic to have this kind of like. Fuck yeah! That... It's like it looks kind of like a mess because they don't know how to make stuff compact for enough effort to not be a mess. Well, it's cool. Yeah, and you can see all, like, the cables and, like, bundles that are, like, tied together with tape. It's so good. It's so good. But I, I, I think it's, like, the, like, the really shitty video quality on the, on, on, like, the tape they're watching. They, like, zoom in and Gara's, like, super pixelated eyes. Like, oh, shit, he's got sicko eyes. <laughs> he does have sicko eyes. <laughs> he does have sicko eyes. It's scary. It's scary. I love that kid. Is there more you want to talk about this episode? Uh, no, you ready to move on? Yeah, sure. Episode 35, The Scroll's Secret, No Peeking Allowed Naruto and Sasuke are fishing with shadow clones and knives. Team 7 are stressing out about scrolls since they only have one day left. We see another team having the same problem, and making the same decisions. Sasuke goes to fetch water, and Naruto wants to create a counterfeit heaven scroll. Sakura figures they'd just be found out if they didn't know what to put on the inside. So Naruto goes to take a peek inside the earth scroll, hoping to be able to reverse engineer the contents of the heaven scroll. Kabuto rushes in and stops them saying the scrolls are trapped. The other team didn't have a Kabuto, and lay catatonic on the forest floor. I, I think Naruto and Sasuke fishing together at the start of this episode is really fun and cute, especially because we get the scene where Naruto's like, ah, oh, there's, there's got to be a better way to catch fish! And Sasuke's like, no, keep jumping <laughs> in the river. <laughs> Good. Does Sasuke just not know? Does Naruto not know? Have none of them considered a fishing rod or any sort of other... <laughs> this, this is all they got. No, Sas- Sasuke used up all of his fishing line fighting Orochimaru okay that makes sense that makes a lot of sense <laughs> I, think, I, I think that's really fun I think that um wait 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 isn't the Uchiha symbol supposed to be like a fishing lure is it I don't remember if it's like supposed to be specifically representative of that I need to check no it's a paper fan so it's, it's not like fishing is like a closely guarded Uchiha clan secret that he's not gonna let anybody know about <laughs> just like that no, jump at the river I can't show you what a fishing rod is. <laughs> the art of fishing will die with me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like a pretty fun way to start the episode. I think that um, once we get into the episode proper, I, I at least immediately hit an issue where I'm like, so we've we've jumped ahead like four days or whatever. We're on the fi- we're on the final day of the the tuning exams. I guess it's like it's more like jumping ahead three days. Final day of this like test of the tuning exams and. Um, I, I guess I personally have a hard time being that invested in the challenge that is uh, is posed here by like the the feeling of the running out of time because I I think the biggest problem for me is that like it's it it feels pretty immediately apparent that like everybody who matters is already done so there's nobody cool left for them to fight yeah and so when Sox's like okay the next people we run into we have to fight them and win and get the scroll it's like. Right, but like I, I, everybody who you've set up to be anything is like—I mean, I think they're all already done. 
Like, we don't know that specifically, but, like, the fact that we don't see any of them, other than, like, Kabuto, who, who he, like, likes not to fight them in this episode, just makes it kind of hard for me to really... I don't, I don't know. Like, I, like I, I, I feel like the extent to which, like, time has passed and the situation in the forest has kind of, like, simplified by the, the amount of, like, characters who, like, had to have finished what they were doing already is pretty bad for the sense of dramatic tension here. But how do you feel about that? Yeah, I I think I'm inclined to agree. I think um I mean ba- basically what you said, right? Just a- anybody we could think of that that could be a problem here is like th- like they have all already been accounted for, right? Like we we know it's not going to be any of the like leaf ninja that we know about. Uh-huh. The, the the other bad guys like the sand the sand siblings, like we already know that they're like have their shit and they're waiting in the tower. Mhm. Uh-huh. The the sound ninja have all also already been addressed, and we know that they don't have a scroll. So like, yeah, and it it, it kind of like runs throughout the episode where like there, there's all of these like little challenges that are presented that I just have a hard time buying into. Like I don't really have much reason to buy into the tension of like oh shit is Naruto going to open up the heaven scroll and like fail the test? Like no, he's not because that would be like <laughs> oh shit! I just realized something about the last episode that I forgot to mention. What's that? I'm pretty sure the previous episode was our first instance of the fucking Naruto ass tree hopping. Yeah, well, was it wasn't it the previous episode. I, I, I guess there's because I, I was thinking about it as a big thing that really, really comes into its own in this episode. But I guess there's some in the previous episode also. There, there was definitely some in the previous episode when, uh, when, when teammate was like on their way to see what Gara was up to. Okay. They were having that conversation like on the move, and they were doing the tree hopping. Mm-hmm. I guess I guess that kind of like slipped by because of like I mean getting getting ahead of ourselves a little bit how much of that there is in this episode where there's just like a really extended conversation and we get that like here's the rhythm of the characters all sailing through the air and like one of them they, they're all like dipping down to like jump off a tree branch like out of sync with each other yeah but that that is definitely like oh yeah the, regardless of like how we want to classify it that is definitely like a part of the Naruto aesthetic that is really crystallized here which is interesting to see yeah. Yeah, so like we we we're, we're definitely met with the dilemma. Like getting back on track a little bit, we're definitely met with the dilemma of like, yeah, I just don't, I don't buy that something exciting is going to happen at this point in the arc because, or like at this point in this test, right? Like it it, it just feels hard to get like super excited. Um, yeah, and like the the only guys it could be are the guys that it turns out to be, right? So, <laughs> and I don't care about those guys. Like Sasuke, like kicked one of those guys' asses early, <laughs> and like yeah, before he had a sicko mode. Yeah. I, I do have to say though, like, I I feel like opening one of those scrolls is like, like they say like, oh yeah, you wake up after the uh, after the after the test is over, and then like you know I guess they come and get you, but I feel like the odds are pretty good you don't actually wake up after the test is over. You could get eaten by like a slug or a tiger or something. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. It's scary out there. I mean, you know, you know what they say. If you, if you die in the forest, it's not our fault. <laughs> if you die in the forest, you die for real. <laughs> They don't. They all have to sign the papers. It is. It's definitely your fault if you open the scroll. But like, damn. I mean, I bet. I bet the scrolls have like a have like a tracking, like a tracking sigil on them. Mm-hmm. So so that scroll scrolls don't get left in the forest. You know, maybe someone next year finds a heaven scroll lying around that was from the previous year. You can't have that happen. Mm-hmm. You uh. I guess, for like realistically speaking, you probably don't have people like opening the scroll day one, so you don't have situations of people waking up after like five days of sleep. With no food or water, like super weak. So it's probably not like I, I, like realistically speaking, probably not that many people die from doing this. Yeah. Plus, like if you're a candidate to be a fucking chunin, you got to be pretty confident, you know, in your abilities. Unless <laughs> unless you're part of Team Ten, in which case you have a very negligent. <laughs> uh... But you know, I mean, we're, we're saying shit, but like. You know how that turns out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess, like, I, I was like, oh, yeah, Kabuto shows up, but I feel like most of what I want to say about Kabuto, we can just save for the next part of the, uh... I'm just gonna move on, then. All right. Kabuto reveals he has both scrolls, and Sasuke wants to fight. But Kabuto has a better idea. He has them head to the tower, and ambush teams moving in to cash in their scrolls. They make it to the tower and immediately fall into a genjutsu, making them walk in circles and tire themselves out, avoiding traps and wildlife. 
When they finally realize something's up, it's revealed the gas mask rain ninja from the beginning of the second exam has been following them. And his team member makes a bunch of scary clones that zombie walk at the gang. So Kabuto's back. Kabuto's hanging out with the with Team Seven again. I, I do really like the moment where where Sasuke's like, "Hey, let's fight," and Kabuto's like, "No, you don't want to fight because you asked me about it. You would you just fucking got you just fucking gone for my ass if uh if, if you're like really, if you really wanted to do that." Um, yeah, Kabuto's just here. He's being a helpful guy. It's not suspicious. Yeah, no, totally on the level. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't think of any reason to question his motives. Nope. Like, like, I was going to say, like, oh, I, I wonder if somebody watching this show in the natural process of it would be as suspicious of him. But I guess he has all he has like that shot of him in the opening where he's looking all out and suspicious. So probably you do. But like, yeah, probably a little bit. I don't probably know. You're, you're probably you got some questions about that guy. I mean, maybe maybe you forgot like two weeks later or like five weeks later or whatever. <laughs> but, you know. But yeah, Kabuto is he, he, they're, they're, they're sailing through the trees or having a conversation. Kabuto is trying to be like, OK, now. You might think that everybody left in this forest by now would be weak, but actually, they're all really strong. There's all sorts of really tough guys who just sit outside the tower until the last day, and I don't think I buy it, right? Like, we we, we see we see Anko and the the Anko people like freaking out about Gara getting there so fast. They're not sitting in that tower going like, "Oh shit, these guys haven't shown up yet. It must be a big fucking deal." Yeah, no, I think I think the medium strong people. Wait yeah. out around the around the face of the tower, but they 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 really they really want us to believe that uh there's 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 some steam left in this in this test, and I'm I'm not the most willing to believe it. I'm I'm being kind of a downer here, but like yeah, right, because like being outside the tower right now is just a risk that you get very little in return for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they, 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 they're approaching the tower. Naruto like notices a like like throws a knife at a giant centipede because like one of his special skills is noticing animals and throwing knives at them. They're wandering around in circles, and you know, they they fucking forgot to make Sakura good at noticing Genjutsu again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> she doesn't have any fucking clue what's going on. She's just like, oh, we've been walking forever. What could it mean? We haven't gotten any closer to the tower. I wish, I wish they were better at committing to to Sakura being good at shit. Yeah. Speaking of Genjutsu, mm -hmm. I think it would be cool if, like, an aspect of Sakura's sicko mode yeah. was having to, like, put Genjutsu on herself to, like, limit it. What do you mean? I don't know. I just think it would be cool to utilize that somehow. Who cares? <laughs> okay, I'm just not sure what, like, like, how putting Genjutsu on herself limits her sicko mode. I want to, I want you to develop this concept for me. I think we need to keep talking about how Sakura can be badass because I, I might be out of things to say about this episode. Okay, 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 okay. So, like, to, like, intentionally and manually induce a state of mind that puts her into sicko mode. Oh, okay. So she's, like... It, it, like, like if, uh, if, if, like, one of the, like, main, like, limits of sicko mode is that she has, like, a hard time, like, getting the confidence together to, like, work herself up to it. If she figures mm -hmm. out, like, a Genjutsu trick to just, like, put her there. Oh, that'd be pretty sick. God, and it could even tie into her relationship with Sasuke, because Sasuke can be the one that, to, like, do it. Yeah. He's like, alright, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, like, convince you that, uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think, like, the, 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 the manifestation of this. Like, is she, uh, is it, is it, like, is it just, like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, like, change how you perceive the situation to, like, make you feel like you're more confident and able to do this on your own. And then, like, part of a character is like, oh, I don't need the Genjutsu anymore, because I, I know I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool. But we don't live in that world, Gwen. And we're, we're gonna have to continue not living in that world. As we watch Naruto every week. Forever. This, this, the, the, this is all part of my Haku Lives fanfic. Okay. Haku <laughs> Lives. Sakura does shit and she's cool. Um... We'll, we'll keep adding to this as, uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll have, like, a beautiful, gleaming alternate version of Naruto that you can see, like, off in the distance by the end of this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put any work into it. The only time I'll think about it is on this podcast, and the only time I'll do anything about it is on this podcast. Yeah, we're not writing sh this shit. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't going <laughs> We've on. We've got to things to do. Yeah. I'm busy! Uh... I'm... In theory, I'm I'm not really busy, but I don't I'm not I'm not gonna write your Naruto fan fiction. <laughs> That's fair. So, the uh, the zombie walking scary clones. Mm -hmm. Do Do you think he made them like zombie walk on purpose to be scary? 
<laughs> Almost certainly, right? Like, maybe he's making fucked up clones that can't walk very well. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, that's right. We've got them in the, the our, our, our circle that can't escape walking around. And now it's time for the scary guys. It would be it's, so it's... funny if they were just, like, kind of shitty and the whole trick was that, like... Yeah, it, the, the, they're like shitty, but they don't cost a lot of chakras, so I can make a lot of them. And then Naruto just completely matches the number and kicks our asses. Like, the, 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 the trick is, like, making them shitty in such a way that they move ominously and not, like, ridiculously. Yeah. <laughs> like, they need to kind of shamble a little bit. They, do, they should not fall on their face. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a very important balance. It's very delicate. Yeah, I, I guess you know. Ne- next week we'll see if my my skepticism about the spite bears out or not. We'll see. Maybe maybe it'll be cool. M- maybe it won't be. But I'm I'm gonna try and have an open mind about it. Yeah, I'm I'm going into it expecting something cool because I'm stupid. Okay, that's I mean that's beautiful. That's like a wonderful ideal to hold to as we as we watch Naruto. Um, yeah, because he wanted it to be cool. You you always want it to be cool. Uh, so I mean, is that all we have to say? I think that's all I have to say. All right, what are we watching next week? Next week, I think we are finally finishing The Force of Death, episodes 36, 37, and 38. Uh, like, maybe starting to get into whatever the next page the tuning exams could be. Who, who knows? It's a mystery. Who knows? I certainly don't. Hey, if you like the podcast and, you know, want to send us some dollars to make, make sure we can keep, you know, hosting it and stuff, check out our Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Konoha Crush. That's all one word, Konoha Crush. And any images we talk about in the episode will be found on our Twitter. That is Twitter at Konoha Crush, all one word, Konoha Crush. Thanks for listening. Later, uh, and remember, there is no such thing as filler.